Welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla and I thank you for stopping by for a visit today. This video isn't going to be about yarn. This video is about me and it's kind of an informational educational video hopefully to help others. So I have scleroderma along with a, another list of autoimmune diseases because once you get one you end up getting a several piled on you whether you want them or not <laughs> i was first diagnosed with scleroderma in 2014 and i rejected <laughs> as if i had a choice i rejected that diagnosis and so I just pretended like I didn't have it. I mean, I was on the right medications that they would give someone with scleroderma because I already had lupus and Sodrins and other Raynaud's and other things going on. But um, I didn't want scleroderma because scleroderma is not a nice thing to have. It hardens your, it, it hardens, it affects your skin. It can affect your organs. It can harden your organs okay so it has hardened my esophagus it, it does not work and it has taken started taking effects on my heart at my last cardiologist appointment she um, said that it was showing signs of you know like it was stage one so you know I'm not in any immediate danger but it's still concerning right and so Anyway, I just got a shipment in today for my feeding tube supplies. And so I know when I was going to get a feeding tube two years ago, I was searching for information. Like my son had a feeding tube for 16 years, but that was a long time ago. And so he had not had a feeding tube for a few years. And then I was getting a feeding tube. And so, you know, I'm familiar, I was familiar with a feeding tube and, but there's always new stuff coming out, right? All the time, new ways to take care of it, new supplies and things like that. So I searched and, um, it was new to me for tending to a feeding tube on my own body <laughs> and not just, you know, a child. So lots of people have feeding tubes for different reasonings. I have one because my esophagus is hardened it does not work properly I can't chew food and swallow food and it go down sometimes I can eat things like ice cream mashed potatoes carrot souffle um, chicken broth yummy um, <laughs> not um, you know some things like that but not all the time it's only if I don't know there's no rhyme or reason why sometimes ice cream goes down and sometimes ice cream doesn't go down okay I don't know um, sometimes I can eat pudding and sometimes I can't who knows <laughs> I don't know there's, there's no sometimes I can't even drink water okay and sometimes my own saliva will not go down my esophagus and that is some very hard days let me just tell you <laughs> But um, I, I'll just show you what my feeding tube looks like. I'm going to kind of be careful here not to show you anything personal. But just to give you an idea, I have this lovely feeding tube coming out of my stomach right here. And this tube, and I have, tape, I have it taped right here to the side. And so that's where we hook up my formula. And that's how I get fed my nutrition. And so... I have this pump right here that is on an IV pole and so my formula is hung from the IV pole and I don't know why this is hanging up so high normally my pump is down here lower I think my little neighbor was helping me do some things and he put it up here because I had taken it off to go to town with it and I think he put it up high because normally it's down here so he did that the other day but anyway that is i have the kangaroo pump it's very easy to work once you just you know figure out how to work it and, and all that my son had an infinity pump so i'm familiar with that pump also but um 
I always had the kangaroo here for myself. But anyway, so having a feeding tube includes having a ton of supplies. A ton of supplies. And you get these supplies every month. You have to get, you know, supplies to last you a month. And you've got to have a place to store those. You've got to organize your supplies and all that kind of stuff. And having a feeding tube does take up a lot of your time. You have to um, flush your tube before meal. You know, I flush it in the mornings, flush it before meals, um, before tube feedings, flush it after tube feedings, um, change the dressing around my feeding tube several times a day, sometimes three, four times a day, but always at least two times a day if it's in good condition. But if it's kind of messy and um, infected around it and stuff like that, I will change it, you know, four or more times a day, usually about four, just to try to, you know, help it heal and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, I was saying, I, I lost train of thought there. My son had a feeding tube because he had eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Um, he still suffers from that today. He's just living with it and doing whatever it is he wants to do because he's an adult. At the age of 16, he took his feeding tube out and decided he was just going to make it. And he's he's doing okay. Although he has, does have some sick days and he does throw eat and then throw up and he feels crummy a lot, but that's his choice. Um, and so he's an adult and that's his choice to do that. So anyway, um, just having a feeding tube entails a lot. Like it's, it's, it's a big deal. It's not like, it's not like this little thing that you can ignore. It's, it's, it becomes your life almost. Okay. I try not, not to let it consume me so much, but truth is a feeding tube is a lot of work <laughs> and so i am thankful for um that you know that i do have a feeding tube or i would get no nutrition at all so it is think thankful that i am thankful that they do have this technology you know i mean i don't know when they started doing feeding tubes i mean it's been years and years ago because my son had one for 16 years but, um, you know, I'm not sure who figured that out and was able to do that. But, yeah, I am grateful for them. Um, so, anyway, I am got shipment in just now. UPS brought some of my supplies. So, I thought I would, before I put them away, I thought I would just do a little box opening with you guys. And show you my feeding tube supplies. And tell you about them. So, just to give you a better idea of what a person with a feeding tube might have to, um, you know, deal with. And also if you are searching YouTube because you or yourself, um, you know, your child or a loved one in your family is about to get a feeding tube, you might just want to know some information about what to expect and some supplies you might need and things like that. So I thought this might be an educational, informative video. All right, so let's see what's in this box. Well, a lot of air. A lot of air that is funny. Okay, I'm gonna put this off to the side. I'm gonna get it up so the cats don't grab it. I have no idea what is in this box, but that was a big old box of nothing. <laughs> so I got one box of split sponges. These are four by four split sponge um, galls. There are 25 packs in this box. So um, we all know that does not last a month. <laughs> That's so funny. Insurance is a racket okay let's just let's just say it insurance is a racket we have blue cross blue shield insurance our policy states that they do not pay a penny on my formula they will pay a percentage of some supplies 
but not all supplies. They're picky about what they pay for and what they don't pay for. So they will pay for 25 of these. So therefore, I need to buy several of these a month also. So just if you're getting a feeding tube, just because insurance is going to pay for a set amount, that doesn't mean that's the amount you need. You probably need to buy three or four more of these boxes off of Amazon. And that's what I do. I just buy them off of Amazon because... Um, Usually, I don't realize I need them until I'm about to run out, and I'm like looking for one. I'm like, oh, I finally found one, and I need to order them, you know, like that day, so they'll be here the next day or the next. So, anyway, I usually order them when I'm like, you know, getting close to running out. So, four by four split sponges. Okay, so those. Um... Okay, tape. This one roll of tape does not last you a month. <laughs> it's almost comical. Really, it's almost comical. Um, I mean, this little bit of supplies does help. I do have to pay my portion on them. The thing is, they come from a medical supply company who jacks the price up. So, therefore, I'd probably just be better off buying it all off of Amazon anyway. Because by the time they jack the price up for insurance purposes so they can make more money and I pay my part, I'm probably paying what I would pay on Amazon. So I need to figure that up one day. Not that I like to figure things up like that, but I'd probably be coming out better just to skip insurance and buy it all off of Amazon. Who knows? Anyway, so tape, and it's not even a good tape, okay? <laughs> It's not even a good tape. This tape, um, I'll use it, but if I use it every day, it will start tearing my skin up. So mainly, I'll use my regular tape that is safe for me, and then I'll use some of this around it so that not much of this is touching my skin. Um... Sorry for turning my back to you while I'm getting things out of packages. Oh, let's see. Okay, so here is a 24 French 7 to 10 milliliter feeding tube. So this is a replacement feeding tube for me. So when this tube gets super dirty, um, say the balloon inside, because inside my body is a balloon filled with water. Let's see if I can just show you what that looks like. Here is a picture of a lovely man sharing his feeding tube with you there. So here is this tube. I'm not going to open it because I do want to keep it clean and all that, but this is basically the feeding tube. Basically, it is the feeding tube. Here's the Y port. That's where we hook up formula, um, give meds. Also, um, this little bitty port, you put water in it. And on the end of this, it doesn't look like it, but there's a balloon. Once you put this into your stomach through the hole in your abdomen, you put water in that and this balloon fills up. And that's what holds it into your stomach that balloon. So if your balloon pops, you need to change your tube and things like that. So I now have an extra feeding tube. So if something happens, I could just change my own tube. I used to change my son's tube um, when he was little and had a feeding tube. So I, I have no problems changing out my tube. When I was at the doctor's office and I told him I needed a tube, he said, well, how are you going to get that changed? Who's, who's going to change your tube? And I was like, I will. And he just looks at me like, of course you will. <laughs> My doctor and I have a very good relationship, and uh, we joke around a lot and everything. So, anyway, that is extra feeding tube. Now, let's remove things. Okay, 
around. So bear with me. So I have that. And I do not know, I'll be honest, I do not know what these are. <laughs> um, I mean, I know what they are, but I don't know why I have. These are like the connectors that go on the end of the feeding tube bag. And they sent me three bags of these. First time they've ever sent this, so I have no idea why or what they want me to do with it. So, I mean, I know what they are. I just don't know why I'm getting them. All right, so let's see what's in another box. cats have discovered the box I just set down there so <laughs> alright well more packaging that is a lot of packaging <laughs> let's see what's in this box is there another sheet? I'm going to look back over these sheets in a little bit and try to figure out why I got certain things. Okay, so in this box, oh, now I see. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so I got the Y. This is something that I can hook to my tube to extend that a little bit further for feedings and plus if you go out um, the feeding tube itself is not that long the cord for this is pretty long but this adds a little bit of length and just um, sometimes makes things more comfortable or whatever so that got several of these one two three four these are called Y extensions it's the kangaroo Y sight extension so now I realize that they sent these to go on this. When I've purchased these before, I've been purchasing them on Amazon, and they already have that connected to them. But for some reason, this, and that is, the ones I get on Amazon are way longer than this, so I don't know how useful this will actually be, but I will talk to my company and see if, they can get them longer or I may just figure out that it's cheaper for me to order it on Amazon anyway but anyway that's what those are for all right let's see here's another box here probably syringes Um, sometimes it is hard to open things for me. Sorry for turning my back to you. Sometimes things are just a little <laughs> difficult. Okay, so what's in this box? This box has syringes. Um, they don't always send me these, so it's nice when they do. I usually use these over and over. And I'll just open one just to show you what it actually is. 
these are large syringes they are um 60 cc syringes so i usually use these like over and over and over until um they don't work very well anymore until they lose their plunge but i this is what i use to flush my um tube af before and after feedings and in the mornings and at night just different times it needs to be flushed with water and so this is the size syringe that i use for that all right let's see what is in this box which should be uh, probably formula bags and actually I have another syringe that they did not send uh, a smaller syringe for medications um, and you know things like that I have to have a smaller syringe for that and then I have a syringe for filling up the balloon. You would think that tube would come with the syringe for that. I have one that they used at the hospital and I just kept it after they used it to fill up the balloon because it is a weird size that doesn't fit. Um, it doesn't work for other things. The other syringes I have don't work for that. So I, um, did keep one from the hospital that I used over and over and over. Alright, and so this is um, a feeding tube bag. This is what you put your formula in. So this is a feeding tube bag and um, you pour your formula in here and close that up such as and then this hangs on your IV pole and you take this tubing and you thread it through it has a little stretchy part right here you thread that through your feeding machine and then um, oh and guess what huh this doesn't have the connectors also so I guess that's another reason why they sent the connectors normally the bags these have a connector on the end that you shove into your tube so you put this in and you got to hold this over the sink and you prime your pump and that runs your formula down all the way through to the end of this and now I will have to be putting one of those little um, connectors on the end of that this is the first time I've received bags that didn't have a connector they've always had connectors so see that is a good reasoning for making these videos so if someone you know was to receive this and they don't know what to do with it they know they need these connectors because things change all the time in the medical world so i don't know why they're not putting these on the end of this anymore but whatever i can we can do it that's fine so your formula goes down to the end of this and then you take this and you hook it into your tube you can't see my tube right now but this just plugs into the end of the tube okay but here, here's the kicker inside that tube is liquid right now like it's um it's water formula stomach acid whatever so inside that little um part where you plug this into it is wet so when you push that plastic piece into that it just comes right back out you have to take q-tilts paper towels and things like that and dry the inside of your tube here dry it as much as you possibly can and then put your thing on there <laughs> and then if I'm just gonna sit at my desk I'm usually okay 
but if I'm up walking around the house and you know I have to pull this with me this is my like this is my best friend <laughs> and so I have to pull this with me wherever I go and sometimes that's not easy I've um, had accidents where the whole thing has just fell over like my ivy pole has fell over to the floor and I have to get it back up and you know get going again and um, it's not easy to pull it over certain floors or into the bathroom you have to go over a rug and there's lips at some of our doorways and so it, it's a hassle dragging this around plus if I'm going about my day and I'm doing things around the house and just moving from room to room or whatever I'm doing, um, my situation is a little bit more different from other people's situation because I need to hold my pole with this hand to get a grip on it. Even though this hand is numb and is not strong at all, I have to hold this. Well, on this hand is my, my other hand. So, I can't necessarily carry things through the house. I have a basket that I'll fill up with things and try to carry that with this thumb or, you know, my arm or something. But it just, it just is um, not convenient to have to drag this around with you and move from room to room or do things in different rooms or take things, you know. Um, if I'm... Um, at my desk just crocheting which is what I try to do while I'm hooked up because that is the easiest and best thing for me in my situation but sometimes you have to go out sometimes you have doctor's appointments you have to go to town and it's feeding time or whatever so you unhook this and put it in a backpack you have your formula in a backpack it runs right in through there and it's hooked to you and it can come undone at any time so therefore I have to take tape and wrap around that and try to get it secure and it can still come undone even with tape it can be a hassle at times too so anyway so that is the feeding bag okay and then I wanted to mention my formula um, Blue Cross Blue Shield does not pay a penny on my formula and it does not matter anything it is wrote in our policy they do not care cover formula it was the same way when my son was a baby um, they don't cover formula and that's just the way it is it doesn't matter if like some people will say oh if your doctor writes a note or if your doctor calls them no no we've been through all that social workers doctor everybody has been through that our insurance will not budge on the policy because it is written in our policy it states they do not cover formula feedings, feeding tube formula and stuff and such. So, even if you can't get a bite of food in your body, they still will not cover that. And then also I have, uh, I drink the Premier Protein Shakes. Um, these are, if I'm not... Like, I hate taking this out with me to town because I always end up drenched with formula. It never fails. <laughs> we always have a mess. And so I try not to take this to town with me. But sometimes it, you have to. But if I'm not taking that to town with me, I take um, Premier Protein drinks with me for while I'm in town. And then also I keep uh, several of these next to my bed. Um, some people like them out of the refrigerator really cold, but um, I have Raynaud's and cold bothers me, so I don't put them in the refrigerator, um, especially at night when I'm, I just leave them, I have some on my nightstand and I just get one whenever I need it in the middle of the night. I wake up and I'm feeling like very empty, my stomach's empty and I'm feeling weak and I just drink one of these for a minute and I'll, you know, feel better. Mm -hmm. So, um, that is some of the, that's the things I received in the mail today. But also, um, I use this, these are supplies that I already had that I do buy weekly or, I mean, monthly and all off of Amazon. So, this is Dermacil Wound Cleaner. 
So that is good for cleaning around my wound. Uh, around my stoma at my feeding tube, which is usually a wound. <laughs> usually, usually. Okay, and so then I have this bag. Oh, here's one of my. So I can show you the a difference. Well, that's about the same size as that one. But this one has a connector on it already. And that one does not. So I don't know why some have a connector and some don't. Hmm. Anyway, so that is a connector that I, you know, extra connector I have. I have um, all kinds of things to go around my wound. Um, the split sponges, calcium algate, alginate dressing. Um, that is something that promotes healing. So I have those. I usually have to keep wipes, like baby wipes. This is calcium alginate dressing again. Some more split sponges. This one is a hydrocellular foam dressing. And I've cut it in fours to make that last longer. And then I'll split it again and put that around my tube um, with and this is um, something else that I purchased off of Amazon. I just got this box in the other day. It's a silver calcium alginate dressing. It's an antimicrobial silver. And it's supposed to promote healing and just do wonderful things. And it does. But my seromastoma is constantly leaking stomach acid and it just eats your skin away and it pulls in the deep holes and it's painful it's painful it really is a painful thing but anyway that's something else that uh you know keep on hand um wipes here's the other side syringe that i use for medications it's a smaller um 12 milliliter syringe then I have um, I have some Neosporin here and some antibacterial ointment that actually did come from the hospital and then Neosporin so I keep those to doctor my wound um, the best tape <laughs> Uh, this barrier cream I put around there to try to keep the stomach acid off of my skin. And so this is a very good barrier cream. Let's see. I have a band here that my friend Lynette sent me. Uh, it's for nausea. And I am nausea a lot. So I have these all over the place. The package that she had sent me had several in there. So I keep one. In here, I keep one in all the different bags that I take to town with me. I keep one at my desk. I, I keep one in my yarn room. Just different places I might be. I do keep these and use that. So that is um, always handy to have. Here is, is this a syringe? Another syringe. Here is the syringe that I use for my balloon. And actually, I have two of those, I think. I think this one is the same. Yes, so I didn't know I had two of them in there. But I have two of those, and that's what I can fill my balloon up with. So it's good to know that I do have two. <laughs> and then here's different bandages, um, adhesive remover wipes. Now, this is all stuff, you know, that I have to just order on my own because insurance doesn't cover it. But when you have tape all over your belly, it leaves tape residue. And <sighs> so they do make this stuff. It's kind of like alcohol wipes, except it works. <laughs> it's adhesive remover. So I have keep those. I keep some in this. I keep some in all my different baggies that I may go to town with. And this is a different brand that I have bought at one time. It says remove on it. Um, a clip 
that goes on my feeding tube like when I put that new one on I'll put this clip on that tube before I insert it in my body so that it can be used to clamp off my tube so that is something that will keep handy uh, this is some more alginate dressing and my medical scissors so um, I use this to cut the alginate dressing and to cut um, galls and stuff like that just whatever needs to be cut and dealt, dealt with another item that I use um, these I ordered off of Amazon so this is a essentially this is a big sticker this peels off and it is a big sticker you can put this on your belly <laughs> <laughs> you put this sticker on your belly and you can take your tube and wrap it in this um, it is like a a little belt I guess you could say for your tube and it will hold your tube up next to your belly and kind of just keeps it from just hanging down um, keeps your tube from just hanging down you can you know secure it up to your stomach like right here so I use these um, I don't this kind of it just kind of velcros backs and locks it in kind of like a little belt for it or whatever but uh, I don't use these all the time I use tape if I'm gonna be at home and I'm not doing anything I mostly use tape um, but that tape does come undone it rolls up and it just doesn't hold the tube down that well if you're active or even at night when you're asleep but if I'm out and about and I know I'm gonna be in town all day long that's what I save these for um, like there's a few in this package but I'll save these for days that I'm not gonna be at home because I don't want to deal with having to retape that you know all the time while I'm out so it, this just makes life easier when you're at, when you're you know out and about and not at home. When I'm at home, I don't mind changing the tape. It's not that big a deal. You just don't want to have to, um, you know, you don't have to tend to a bunch of extra stuff when you're out. So that is another thing that I use. Also, this. <laughs> You might be like, what in the world is that? Well, let me show you. <laughs> these are flannel. These are made of flannel. And they are little circles that I put around my tube. Like you might have saw when I had my shirt up earlier. That I put my dressing on my tube. My, um, my alginate dressing. The silver um, whatever, so the split gauze sponge, um, whatever kind of dressing that I'm putting around it. And then on top of all of that, I take this circle, it's just a split circle, and pull it up under the bumper of my tube. And that really helps it. When I take this off at changing, it is nasty, okay? It is nasty. But I just throw these in the wash and can reuse them. Um, I had someone to make these for me. You can buy them on, I think you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them on Etsy. People make these and sell them. So that's where I got these. And I'm not, you know, like picky about the print. But on Etsy, they sell them all fancy. And they put these little snaps on them. Well, I can't always get that snap off especially when the whole thing is wet and it's on your body. Like right now, I can get that done because I can just put my fingers through there and do it. But when it's on your body and it's all nasty and gross and you're trying to get it undone, it kinda, it's kind of hard to do. 
these um, I found somebody that would just put some Velcro and actually I don't even really have to Velcro them it's there I just put it around my stoma and sometimes it does get Velcroed but that's easy for me to undo so these are homemade and they're made of flannel um, this person had some flannel that they had made um, burp rags with and baby um, diapers and stuff with and I wanted something soft and so she asked did I mind the print and I'm like no I do not mind what the print looks like I'm personally you know not going to see it it's going to be under my shirt so she um she just made up a bunch of different ones and sometimes it's different flannel on different sides which does not matter to me whatsoever you know some of them it's baby print like most of this is baby print which is fine i don't care so that is um a necessity to have that and then um now they do make some you know really cutesy and all that but i'm not really concerned about being cutesy these are really pretty um and these have sloths on them and they are cute but then again they have the buttons, and the buttons are, you know, not always easy for me. The buttons are not always easy for me. <laughs> so, sometimes I do, like, I can't get that one undone. Sometimes I do have a lot of trouble undoing those. So, I just found that the Velcro ones work best for me. And then I have um, some little terry cloth baby wash rags, essentially is what it is. It's stained up. They're not pretty <laughs> because feeding tube is not pretty, okay? It is not. It can be downright gross, okay? It really can. But um, I have these also that um, I might need, like if it's really, really bad shape, there's been times where... I haven't been able to put dressing on it. I can just clean it and kind of just wrap one of those around it and um, kind of essentially let it kind of air out a little bit and try to get some relief that way. So this is my feeding tube supplies. I'm sure there's other things like in my bedroom closet, I have six drawers. They are the plastic cart um the three drawer cart system that you can get from walmart um you can buy three at a time i can i had one of my sons to take the top off of the top drawer and stack another set of drawers on it so it's six drawers high and in that i uh, sort my supplies like i have a drawer for syringes a drawer for two um the feeding bags a drawer for tape, um, gauze, split sponges, I couldn't think of the name of it. Um, I'm trying to think what all is in those drawers. Just different things like that. So I may even have supplies back there that I don't use all the time, but that I need sometimes. So that's where they're kept in that drawer, in those set, that set of drawers. So. This is the bulk of what I use daily, you know, mostly. And those things back there might be things that um, I don't particularly use daily, but a lot of times. But anyway, I hope that someone out there found this video useful, educational, informative. Like I said, you know, when I was getting a feeding tube, I was searching for information and there was not a lot of information out there um, just what to expect what did I need and such like that so that's the purpose of this video and I thank you for watching and I hope you have a blessed day and if you return I will see you in the next video bye friends